Okay. Good morning. It is a beautiful day, is it not? It was not beautiful yesterday very much. Jesse can attest to that. He was supposed to go mowing yesterday, but instead he spent his time on the couch. And he went to Starbucks. Uh, I feel like I'm loud. Um, yeah. He has risen. He's risen indeed. I know that's kind of an Easter kind of thing, but it's only a week after Easter, so I can still do it. Last week we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. And last weekend we went through Holy Week and we went through the life and the death of Jesus Christ. And this week we're going to be in John chapter 20, which is right after the death. And it's right after Jesus has risen. But before I get into this text, let's look at where the disciples are at this time. Where would you probably see the disciples? I see them as probably being overjoyed. They're like, wow, Jesus' prophecy has come true. It's happened. But this isn't where they are right now. Let me set up the stage for you. So they were spending years with Jesus, and they were listening to Jesus' teachings and his prophesying of his own death and his own resurrection. And then last week, it happened. Last week, Jesus was put on the cross, and he died for our sins. And three days after that, when the disciples, Peter and the other disciple, come to the, the tomb, Jesus' tomb where he is buried, they find it empty. All they find is strips of linen, and they are saddened. They don't see that Jesus' prophecy is coming true. They don't see that. And then here comes Mary Magdalene coming and saying, I have seen the Lord. But the Jews, or the, the disciples, don't understand what's going on here. They have doubt and fear. So let's dive into John chapter 20 this morning. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 25. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together and the doors were locked for fear of the Jews, Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, let their sins, then their sins are for forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Usually when we look at this text, we we uh, point out Thomas. We say, oh, that's doubting Thomas right there. But I want to look at the other disciples too, that they are just as guilty of doubt. That it says that they lock the doors out of fear of the Jewish leaders. These disciples were right there with Jesus. They lived the life like we just said. If anyone could see the truth, it would be them. So, But we look at the disciples and we say, how could you miss this? The disciples, they just saw their master die. They thought Jesus was the, going to be a Messiah who would come and he would save the, people, the children of Israel, the children of Israel from oppression. But that's not how he did it. They were, it was unexpected that he would die on the cross. 
And now that they've seen their master die, they're afraid. They're full of fear. Thomas is full of doubt. They don't want the Jewish leaders to come to them, knocking on their door and saying, you're next. But when Jesus comes, as we just read, the disciples are overjoyed. They see that this is what happens. But Thomas isn't with them at this point. And when the disciples try to tell Thomas, he is here, he is risen, Thomas doubts. Because just like the disciples, he saw his master die. Thomas was probably thinking, perhaps these men are just, they thought they saw Jesus. Perhaps their minds are just messing with them. Maybe they're just in the stages of grief. Does this mean that the disciples' faith and Thomas's faith is weary? I mean, they heard the words of Jesus, so why do they still have doubt and fear? We may ask, why didn't they just have faith? It may be easy to point to the disciples and see their failures, but how easy is it for us to look at our own doubts and fears, at our own failures? For those of us who have grown up in the church, we have heard the Bible story, and we have heard the message, and we've heard all the, the Sunday sermons. We know what's right, we know what's wrong. So Sunday messages aren't really for us anymore, because we know, we already know it. Everything's the same. How much can you actually preach from the Bible? But despite what we think we know, despite this, our belief in Jesus, we have doubts and fears just like the disciples did. Not all doubts and fears are the same. There are different ways of expressing them. One example is uh, through prayer. That when we pray for something, we're like, God, please have this happen. I want, we need this. And we keep praying it over and over and over again, but we don't see anything happening. We don't see change. So what do we do? We decide, I'm going to go do that, and I'm going to do it. So then we take matters into our own hands to fulfill the prayer that we are asking of God. And we, when we do this, we are not putting our trust our full trust in Him. We're trying to take matters into our own hands. Or how about when God is calling us to go do this or do that? And instead of trusting God and having faith in Him and just going and doing whatever He's asking of us, we take a step back and we want to know all the details. We're like, I have to research this. I have to know everything about this before I take a leap of faith. Or what about when God calls us to something and we're afraid? For an example, like public speaking or being a missionary, where God's calling us to these different things, but maybe we're afraid to do that. Our fear acts as a barrier to the calling of God. And in these ways, we have these doubts and fears sometimes, and we, make, we allow them to overrun our lives. So let's turn back to Scripture to see what are we supposed to do with these doubts and fears. Because the story doesn't end right there. It keeps going. So right after what we just read, it says this, A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, just like before, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach your, out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and have yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs in, in the presence of his disciples, which are now recorded in this book. But these were written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by, tell, and the, and by that, by believing, you have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thomas had doubts about the return of Jesus. But here, he comes again just as he had before. And in both circumstances, he shows the disciples his wounds. He shows them his hands and his side, where the nails were put and where the spear pierced his skin. Why did he do this? He did this because he wanted them to know that this is Jesus. This isn't just a look-alike. This is the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Him. They wanted this assurance that this isn't just a look-alike, not just someone that looks like Jesus, but it is Jesus. And then he says, Peace be with you. He says this three times throughout this scripture right here. Peace be with you. And to, all, and to this, Thomas replies, My Lord and my God. He is awed by Jesus. And when Jesus says, Peace be with you, it's acting kind of like a greeting. Like, hey, hello. But peace be with you. But perhaps this phrase here means something a little bit more. Despite their doubts and their fears, Jesus is telling them to have peace in Christ, to have the peace of Christ. In the book of Philippians, which is written later by Paul, he says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, will transcend, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're talking about this peace of God, that despite our doubts and our fears, we can still have this peace that comes from Jesus upon our lives. We're going to have doubts and fears, just like the disciples did. We're going to have those. And we need to recognize that we're going to. But what Scripture is telling us is that these doubts that are presented, we should present them before Christ. We should lay them on Christ. And when we lay our doubts and our fears on Christ, we receive this peace of God. We don't have to hold on to these doubts and fears. There's a song called Just a Little Talk with Jesus that I'm going to read some of these lyrics here. Listen to this. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He bathed my heart in love, and he wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him about all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer wheel turning, and you will know a little fire is burning, find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eye be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I think this this song really sums up what is going on here, what the Bible is saying here, that just a little talk with Jesus is going to make it all right. That when we have these doubts and fears, we don't have to keep them. We give them to Jesus. We tell them to Jesus. He wants us to be real with him. We don't have to pray like, oh, hey, Jesus, thank you for all this, thank you for this. We, we can say those things. But we also need to be real with Jesus. That he knows life is going to be hard for us. And that we shouldn't try to hide those things to him. But we can tell him our doubts. We can tell him our fears that we have. Jesus is what makes us whole. Jesus is where we get the peace of God. So when we are going through times when we have doubts and fears... We should, instead of keeping those to ourselves, give them to God. If we don't, if we keep them, 
then we risk losing the relationship with God, and we risk losing this calling of God that he's going to call us to. Like I said, I said before that we need to step out on faith sometimes. This reminds me of the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I'm not sure if any of you or all of you have seen it, but at, towards the end of the movie, Indiana Jones has to go through three challenges or tests, kind of, to, on the search for the Holy Grail. And so the third challenge that he has to go to is a leap of faith. So he gets to this giant canyon that's probably like from me to the back of the church. And it says you have to take a leap of faith and jump to the other side. No human can obviously do that. But despite Indiana Jones's doubts and his fears of jumping off a canyon and falling to his death, he decides to take the leap of faith. So he, even though know, he has these doubts and fears, he takes a step. And if you've seen the movie, you know there's a hidden pathway on the canyon that it's shaped just like the canyon. So when we take this leap of faith, we might not see what God's doing. We might not see what's, how, he, how he's going to fix it. Because we may have these doubts and fears that are clouding what we see. But what Jesus says is that blessed, where does it say? Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We cannot let our doubts and fears block us from this task of God. Even though we have doubts, we may have fears, we must give these to Jesus to give us the, so that he can give us this uh, peace that comes. I want to close you with this. In the words of Jesus from the NIV Bible, stop doubting and believe.